Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're taking a look at the new ASUS ROG Strix 6700 XT OC Gaming, which happens to be a rather massive 6700 XT graphics card. Now, right out of the gate, the MSRP for the 6700 XT is $480 US. But as you'd no doubt expect, the Strix model that we have here is priced nowhere near that, coming in at $800. $830 US, and that's a ludicrous 73% price premium, which I suppose by today's standards probably isn't that unreasonable. Anyway, while I certainly don't recommend anyone pay a 70-ish percent premium for any graphics card, I am quite interested to see what ASUS has done here, especially given that the last air-cooled Radeon Strix graphics card that I looked at ended up being a bit defective due to a design error and how the cooler was mounted. Also, this is one of the few AIB 6700 XT graphics cards that I'm yet to look at. A lot of you have requested noise normalized testing, so I've gone back and done that for all of the models that were featured in our day one coverage. Anyway, enough chit chat, let's get into the review and I'll start by taking a closer look at the Strix 6700 XT. As expected, ASUS is using a similar design to that of the GeForce 30 series Strix models. So we have that industrial looking fan shroud with the silver aluminium trimmings. Again, I really like this design. It looks aggressive while also being somewhat neat at the same time. Again, we find ASUS is using the axial tech fans. And of course we've got three 90 millimeter fans with the centrally located fans spinning counterclockwise to reduce turbulence. I should also note that the card includes a fan stop feature, which activates when the GPU drops below 55 degrees. As for the dimensions, as mentioned earlier, this thing is a bit of a behemoth, taking up 2.9 slots at 56.5 millimeters wide. So in other words, it takes up three slots. It also measures 322 millimeters long, stands 141 millimeters tall, and weighs in at 1662 grams. So significantly heavier than the 880 grams of the AMD reference card. Around on the back side of the card, we find a full size backplate with an opening at the end to allow air to pass through, though this pass through really only benefits a very small section of the heatsink. The backplate looks quite good. There's an embedded ROG logo and a few painted details that give it a bit of a gamerish look, let's say. Then around at the IO end of the card, we find a single HDMI 2.1 port and three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs. So that's the same configuration as the AMD reference card and all four outputs can be used simultaneously. Now just quickly, let's talk about the RGB lighting, which can be found on the edge of the card. So the section facing outwards when traditionally mounting the graphics card. ASUS has gone with a fancy light bar type design, which can be controlled using their Armory Crate software. And I have to say the lighting effects are integrated into the design quite well. But that's really all I have to say about the RGB stuff. So let's move on to tear the card down. As noted earlier, the ROG Strix 6700 XT weighs in at 1662 grams, and 72% of that total is accounted for by the heatsink, which weighs an impressive 1198 grams. Design-wise, it is rather complex, featuring a series of nickel-plated copper heat pipes which extract heat from the large copper base and disperse it through the large volume of aluminium fins. It's also worth noting that both the GPU and GDDR memory contact the cooler using a nickel-plated copper base. Now, because this is such a big heavy cooler, a major concern is how you go about mounting it to the PCB, and we've seen this isn't always something ASUS has done a good job of in the past. But it seems as though they have learnt from past mistakes by firmly securing the VRM portion of the heatsink. Then to ensure that the PCB doesn't flex, ASUS has developed an aluminium brace that connects to the PCB in several locations, as well as an additional two anchor points on the IO bracket and two at the far end of the backplate. ASUS has also used this large aluminium brace to remove heat from the left bank of power stages and then the right bank of inductors. So that's quite creative. Further strengthening the card is the aluminium backplate, which weighs in at 103 grams. It's not the thickest backplate we've ever seen, but still it does help. ASUS has also employed a few thermal pads here to remove built up heat from the backside of the PCB, which is always great to see. Then finally over on the PCB we find a fairly lengthy 272mm long board equipped with 11 Vachet SIC 643A 50 amp power stages. So what we have here is a 9 phase VRM for the GPU and then 2 phases for the GDDR6 memory. As for the power input, ASUS has gone with a pair of 8 pin PCIe power connectors, so that's a small upgrade from the 6 plus 8 configuration of the AMD reference model. 
Also included on the PCB are two remounted PWM Fan Connect headers that allow users to connect case fans directly to the card. These can either be tied to the GPU's fan curve or manually tuned. And just lastly, ASUS has also included a dual BIOS switch that allows you to change from the default performance BIOS to a quiet BIOS. Though I have to say I feel there is little need for a quiet BIOS given how quiet this card is using the default performance BIOS, but having a secondary backup BIOS is always a very nice feature. Now in terms of clock specifications, ASUS lists a core clock frequency of 2548MHz, which is a 10% boost over the 2321MHz default spec. The GDDR6 memory, on the other hand, has been left stock at 16 gigabits per second. Okay, so let's move into the benchmark graphs, and for this one I'm testing with our Ryzen 9 5950X GPU test rig with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 memory. The latest drivers available at the time of testing have been used, and for this one we have just a few select games to look at. First up we have the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results, and I've removed any other competing GPUs from these charts to make it as clear as possible just how little difference in performance there is between the various 6700 XT graphics cards. In short we're looking at up to a 3% variation in performance between the fastest and slowest 6700 XT tested. And that amounts to 3 FPS, so a negligible difference. And it's not just shut off the Tomb Raider, we're also seeing little to no performance difference between these various 6700 XT graphics cards in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Here just up to a 2% performance difference can be seen. And the last game we're going to bother looking at is Watch Dogs Legion, and again we're looking at no more than a 3% difference between the fastest and slowest 6700 XT tested. So in other words, it really doesn't matter which one of these graphics cards you buy when it comes to FPS performance. Now as expected, they are also very similar when it comes to power consumption, though here we are seeing up to an 11% disparity in the results, with the MSI Gaming X model using the most amount of power at 236 watts. In comparison, the ASUS Strix card averaged 219 watts in our test, which is actually less than that of the AMD reference model, so this is certainly one of the more efficient 6700 XT graphics cards. Now for a look at out of the box temperatures, and we'll start with the hotspot results. Here the ASUS Strix model peaked at a cool 73 degrees, which is the best result we've seen so far, though do note the fan speed is higher than many of the other models tested. Still at 38 decibels, it was reasonably quiet and could only just be heard over the case fans. Also, here's a quick look at the edge temperatures, and again, the Strix is very cool, peaking at just 55 degrees here, which is a 3 degree improvement over the Power Color Hellhound, though again, the fan speed is higher. So let's noise normalize these models and retest. Okay, so with the cards all noise normalized to 40 decibels, we find that the ASUS Strix is no longer the best performer, though it is still mighty impressive. The bigger and heavier XFX Speedster Merc took out the top spot with a peak temperature of just 67 degrees. But still, 72 degrees for the ASUS Strix is a very good result, and that placed it alongside the Power Color Red Devil and Sapphire Nitro Plus, both of which are excellent graphics cards. The edge temperature remained at 55 degrees, which is again a very good result, and that placed the Strix model alongside the very best 6700 XTs that we've tested to date. Now at this point you might have noticed that I've skipped overclocking, and this is something I plan on doing moving forward with these AIB reviews, and the reason is quite simple, I believe the OC data can be quite misleading, as we're representing a sample size of 1. Silicon quality does vary, and unless the manufacturer is guaranteeing high quality binned silicon, it's really a luck of the draw type situation. In the case of the ROG Strix 6700 XT OC Gaming, I could have ended up with one of the worst overclocking models, or perhaps one of the best, and had my sample ended up at one of those extremes, then my results wouldn't be representative of what you're likely to find. Overclocking results also incentivize AIB partners to cherry pick their samples that they send to reviewers like myself, ensuring that their model overclocks the best, and again that's probably not going to be representative of your experience. And although we do tend to buy a lot of the products we test, we're still limited by a sample size of one, and again, that's never going to be representative of everyone's overclocking experience with that product. I'm sure this decision will upset some people, as I know some of you heavily focus on the OC results, and it's for this reason that we're actually going to stop including them. If, for example, the XFX Speedster Merc was cheaper than the ASUS Strix model and ran cooler, but let's say it didn't overclock nearly as well in our testing, that could mislead people into believing the ASUS model is almost always going to guarantee better overclocking results, and therefore sway them towards that product. 
And this can be a problem because in reality, the cards could feature quite a different quality silicon. And again, it is really luck of the draw here. There are absolutely going to be some Strix models with better silicon than the Speedster Mercs, while there'll be instances where the opposite is true. At the end of the day, stuff like operating temperatures are the best indicators of overclocking headroom. Because no matter how good the silicon is, if you have a poor quality cooler, it's just not going to overclock as well as a card with a good cooler. So I hope that explains why I've decided not to include the OC results based on a sample size of one. Of course, it is true that silicon quality can also influence operating temperatures, but I found this to be far less significant when compared to OC headroom, and therefore I'm confident that all models will perform fairly close to what's been shown here. That being the case, the Strix is one of the very best quality 6700 XTs, and perhaps there's no surprise there, given that we know ASUS has improved their designs considerably from the previous generation, used to cool the 5700 series. Of course, as good as the design is, the Strix comes unstuck when discussing the price. Granted, pricing in general is a bit of a mess right now, but even so, it is impossible for me to recommend any product that's coming in more than 70% over the MSRP. When compared to competing models, the Strix version isn't too terrible in the US, but here in Australia, it's a complete joke. The Power Color Red Devil OC, for example, while not only being in stock here in Australia, it does retail for $1,000. That's about $300 AUD over the recommended retail price, or RRP, but it's also $350 AUD cheaper than the Strix model. So locally here in Australia, I'd recommend you get the Red Devil. It's just the obvious choice given the massive difference in price. Anyway, as I said, pricing is a mess right now due to the high demand and poor availability. So fingers crossed that situation improves later in the year. If at any point in the future you can find an ASUS ROG Strix 6700 XT OC gaming for a reasonable price, then it is certainly a model to be on the lookout for. But at 70% over the MSRP, I'd just rather play at 720p with an APU. And that's the truth. If you liked this video, you know what to do. Subscribe for more content from us. And if you'd like to get more involved with the Harbor Box channel, then you can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. Signing up to either of those will make you a Harbor Box community member and give you access to our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, Q and A's, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.